welcome into another edition of the MLB Draft Spotlight Show. And this episode truly, I mean, if you know anything about me and kind of where I'm from, this episode has been like two and a half years in the making. I'm really excited to introduce Travis Bazana, Sydney, Australia's own Oregon <laughs> State Beaver. Travis, welcome, man. Long time no see. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. It's it's good to be on here. I feel like it has been a long time in the making. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Of course, of course. Uh, so Travis, you have a very interesting story, right? Uh, not a lot of guys, very few, maybe on one hand, have come from Australia to the States, play ball, let alone move on to professional ball. And we'll get to that. But kind of tell, tell me about your journey. Tell me who you are, where you've been, where you came from, and, and everything in between. Yeah, um, I guess I came from Sydney, Australia, grew up in, in the same household from, from a young one. And um, lucky enough, my dad played bowl when he was in high school and, and, a, and a kid. And I've got two older brothers and they were playing their kind of seven, nine-year baseball when I was a little two, three-year-old. And I guess from the, the moment I stepped foot on the field, I just fell in love with it and wanted to be around it all the time and yeah um just have always pursued the journey of being a major league baseball player and being the best baseball player I can since a really young age as long as I can remember and um yeah Oregon State's been an absolute amazing opportunity for me and I just loving the journey and can't wait to keep keep pursuing <clears throat> Can you tell me a little bit about how you ended up at Oregon State? Because I'm assuming it had to take some creativity in terms of them finding you and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it was interesting. I I didn't really know much about college baseball until I was about 15 years old. Um, and at that same time was when sort of pro interest started to come on the international free agent side. And then also just figuring out, all right, now's when I got to make decisions for my future, whether that's go play Pro Bowl or go find a college. Um, and I got some light pro interest, and nothing that was I was willing to take up at 16. And then it was like, okay, I want to go play the best college baseball I can play and put myself in the best position to get drafted and have a good experience there. Um, and so, yeah, I started researching colleges. And so the Australian way was sort of, Juco only, go to the best Juco possible because um, that's going to be the best chance for you to kind of grow and play and be a draft guy. And so I immediately, the first thing I was looking for is like top ranked Juco's. I was like, I'm going to go to San Jack or Central Arizona or something like that. Like that's what I was thinking at 16. And then I had some good people in my corner, um, particularly Trent Olchin and Ryan Roland Smith, who were doing a business at the time called Next Gen Baseball. And they, were providing recruiting opportunities in the States for Australian kids. And they kind of told me like, look, you, <clears throat> we've seen the kids in the U S your age. And we really think you can go to a, a powerhouse school. And we want you to believe that and be ready to, to go show out in front of those coaches and do it. And so I kind of changed my thought process. And I said to myself, I'm going to go to this tournament, the fall classic in Arizona of October, uh, October, 2019 fall classic mm -hmm. um, and just be, the best prepared I can be and set goals for it and uh, make no doubt in coaches and recruiters minds that I should be a guy they should recruit. So I kind of went about that, got my academics all sorted out, my SATs and um, played in the two week tournament <clears throat> in Arizona and played hard, played pretty well. Lucky I had some good eyes on me and some people in my corner to help me um, through the recruiting process. But um, Oregon State was the best, the best baseball school and best place I could see myself developing in a person and a player. And I uh, made that decision a couple of weeks after when I got back to Sydney with my family. That's interesting. Uh, how, how did you take to adjusting <clears throat> to kind of the stuff that you saw in the States? Because that fall classic down in Arizona is no joke. I mean, that, that's, that's in a lot of, in a lot of cases, it's the best talent high school baseball has to offer on the West coast. So kind of what was it like being exposed to those arms? um you know what it was like it wasn't much different to back home and the reason that was is because when you're 15 16 17 in Australia you're playing with men so like 
I wasn't playing with 15 year old arms out of Australia. Like I was playing with 25 year old arms that just got back from college or played indie ball last year or whatever in the Australian baseball league and in what's called state league back home. So a lot of the solid, like I'd say in the full classic when I went as a junior, like kind of a junior, like there was a, a good amount of 85 and like a couple guys here and there that were 90. Like it wasn't powerhouse arms, but it was good arms. And it was sort of nothing I hadn't seen a little bit of before. And I just went in there with confidence. So um, it, definitely a good playing field, but uh, yeah, I, I felt like I have my feet under me. So, uh, I mean, the next step, you go to the Pac-12. Well, first you go to the Northwest League. You absolutely <clears throat> destroy it for Kalamazoo. Uh, and then you go to the Pac-12. You destroy it in the Pac-12 right out of the gates. Did it surprise you? Did it surprise you that you walked into that level of competition and you were immediately one of the better players in both conferences, both leagues? Um, I don't think it did surprise me. I think I think there was some, some uncertainty as to where I would fit in the mix when I was coming over. And, and I always come back to this. It's, it was, it's a real thing, real conversation. Like I, we, I was a week out from leaving to the U S um, before that summer league in 2021. Like I hadn't moved yet. And I'm hitting with my dad, just a regular session in the cage. And I raked that day, like a week out from going to the U S it's getting real close. I'm like, I'm feeling good. And, uh, and he goes, how, how good ser- like real really seriously question how how good do you think you're gonna be like in the west coast league like i'm really curious i don't know how you're gonna fit in um and i said i think i can be the best hitter in the league and um yeah i i kind of just believed it and i was like i'd put in the work for months on end um leading up to that just like preparing myself for what i was going to face and i think i just left yeah, I left Australia with all the confidence in the world to just go out and play. And I lucky enough had a great first two games in the summer league that just made my confidence kind of cemented. I was like, I really can play at this level and I can compete and do what I do. And then I sort of just rode that out. And I guess freshman year, there was some some ups and downs. I had a successful year overall, but um, I definitely learned a lot about <clears throat> consistency and being able to step in the box with the right approach and, and game plan and prepare myself routinely. Like those things were big learning experiences freshman year. Um, and I think one thing I was thinking about a little bit lately is I would say I always had the, the bat to ball skills, but freshman year I tried to hit like I had like big boy pop and I didn't have the swing to backspin balls full side. And so what was happening is when I, like, I was like trying to put up, power numbers i was like i just hit for average in summer league i need to put up power numbers and i sort of i didn't really have the swing down at that point to like have good ball flight and so i was just yanking and i think that kind of domed me up freshman year which was interesting um but yeah just growing and learning from it but this, that summer league i just stepped into it with confidence and uh yeah it went well I've talked to a lot of people about you, Travis, just in terms of like the way that you approach the game and the way that you are a relentless thinker, uh, infinitely curious. And so I kind of want to tap into that a little bit. Like what got you, that's kind of a transitional way of saying what got you into analytics, man, because you are one of the more analytic guys that I've ever come across at this level, at this stage in your baseball kind of journey, what got it started? Um, I think the, the core, the core of that is just being an ultra competitor, um, since a super young age, like eight, 10 years old, whether it was rugby, baseball, cricket, soccer, like when I was playing with my mates or playing at school, like everything I do, I'm trying to win and trying to be the best. And so for me, like I'm a, I'm a very, I'd say in most of the things that I do, I'm very analytical, like a logical thinker, like trying to find ways, reason for what's happening. I'm like, I've, as time's grown, I've, I'm very like process driven in the way I go about my training and whatever. And for me, it's just one of those things I became passionate about because it's like, the more I know on why things happen and the process to being great, that's where analytics came in for me. And it's like, it's an edge used correctly. Like for me, it's been an, an edge and 
a way I can help my teammates and a way I can just know more about myself because the more you know and the more you can be self-aware with yourself like then you can attack the right things in training and attack the right things away from the field and just become better at what you do because you understand it to a deeper level so i think not wanting to know an edge i've always wanted to have that edge and analytics and the resources we have now days um i've yeah or i just want to utilize it to the best i can i guess yeah i mean I- I think you accomplished two things with that. I mean, it sounds to me like you kind of have a good feel for what teams at the next level value, like how they build out a model when they're when they're targeting a player. But I think all those skills and analytics and curiosities that you bring to the table really do improve your output at Oregon State. So let's let's bring it back to up here at Kent, Washington, where I'm from, Driveline. You spent a lot of time with Driveline here over the last couple of years. What have they done for you? Kind of where have they taken your game? Yeah, so I finished my freshman year and I was <clears throat> disappointed where we ended as a team. And I was also disappointed in like the, the way I performed. It was a good year, but I felt like I had more in the tank. Um, and I think the main focus was I wanted to learn how to back spin the ball full side. Um, I wanted to hit the high fastball better. And I wanted to hit righty sliders a little bit better. And I also wanted to add like bat speed and add pop so I could slug to a level that a first rounder would slug. Because that was kind of the goal as an individual when I first got to school. Um, and so, yeah, I went in there and <clears throat> the, first, the first things that they came up with was it was postural in my swing. Um, I sort of the way my posture was kind of stacking with my upper half um, in my swing, uh, just like early forward bend and then over side bending, which would create a very like vertical um, and uh, uphill attack, which then like flare top spin, all of that. Um, so they tried to just kind of get me more square and flatter so that I could spin the ball better with better flight and also just sequence better under my like over my pelvis. Um, and then just training the right way in the weight room and, and with bat speed work to, to add the pop that the miss hits play better. So, um, again, getting the biomechanics stuff and whatever and the right cues. And after 10 weeks, I made huge jumps. Then I went out and played my sophomore year and had a been success. And then obviously the Cape uh, had some success too. So they helped me a, a bunch. And it was, again, it's one of those things that, like, I'd wanted to do for so long because I'd always wanted, I knew that they had the resources that I could utilize. It's like, it's, there's different things that make different players better. One guy could go to one hitting coach and become elite. One guy could go to one hitting coach, get nothing out of it. One guy could go to driveline and get something out of it. One guy could go and not get something out of it. It's like, I knew it was going to be good for me because I put myself in a position to understand the resources they were going to give me. And also just like, I'd, put the hours of working in my swing and risk change and tried things and felt things to where when it's like, Hey, feel this in your swing or change this. I was able to like stick to it. And also like, it was a process for five weeks there when I was trying to make the changes they were putting forward to me, I didn't make any gains. I, I, I was struggling. And then it all clicked with like one, you get that breakthrough moment and you just have to be able to stick to it in the work sometimes um, to make that breakthrough. And yeah, the people there got my back and I'm in really quality circles with, with some of those guys there. And uh, I'm eternally grateful for what they've done. I can hope to continue to work with them. No doubt. Uh, your development, it sounds like it's just relentless. You, you never stop trying to get better. Do you, do you kind <clears throat> of silo, do you silo your development a little bit or do you find yourself like fighting the urge to constantly try and push your teammates at Oregon state and, or like educate and mentor your teammates on what you've learned and how they can improve. Like, how do you fight that urge to keep everything, I guess, contained for lack of a better word? Yeah, I think the more and more I've, the more time I've spent at Oregon State, the more I've opened up the way I like speak my knowledge and speak my thoughts um, to guys. And I think 
I've gained a lot of respect on people I've played with. Um, as I've learned how to, the right times to say something and the right things to help guys on um, and just where I can add info and knowledge to my teammates and whatever, like, it's just come with growth, but I think it's been really valuable. Um, I spent a lot of time just out of passion and wanting to win here at Oregon State last summer, um, building, building presentations on <clears throat> breaking ball shapes and breaking ball usage and pitch usage and fastball shapes and sinker shapes and doing presentations on that last summer um, when I got here in the fall. And then this fall, just talking about habits and making it less analytical for guys. Um, there's nothing I want more than to, to win a national championship here. And um, that's the reason, pretty much the main reason I came to Oregon State. So I feel like I can really help guys with that. And even just the people I live with, like I've, I, they've made such great gains and it's just helped out a way of going about our training together. Just me being able to spread some, some of that knowledge and help them with that. And I think guys, understand the value of it and they respect the fact that I've put time into that and it helps um, grow our relationships and talk about things and um, I don't know it's just a passion and I want all the people that I care about to have as much success and joy in their life on and off the field and if I can provide vital information to them that can help them uh, and teach them how to apply it then that's awesome. I've only heard stories about the PowerPoint presentations you've put together for the team. And let me tell you, let me tell you, you're the first person I've ever heard of doing such a thing, but I think it really does speak to just a level of respect that you've probably grown in that, in that clubhouse. So you go to the Cape this year, uh, mm -hmm. you, you switch to wood bat. That's brand new. What sort of adjustments did you make on the Cape this year to kind of further your game? This is a very, very different brand of baseball. Yeah. Um, I feel very confident with a wood bat in my hand. I think I, I swung wood from 14 onwards up until I got to the call, like the, the fall of 2021. So for, since I was like after I grew um, as a teenager, like I swung wood because in Australia we didn't swing metal in the men's leagues I was playing. In. So. Um, I just just feel super confident with a metal bat in my hand, uh, a wood bat in my hand, and I think that my ability to square the ball up and like hit the sweet part of the barrel, as much as this is so like simple and like whatever, you have this much room for error in a metal bat and this much with a wood bat to like hit a pod, um, and I think I hit this part of it more than a lot of guys, and um, that's helped me. So I feel confident with the wood bat, and I just went out there and. I think being in a high level environment like the Cape for me, it helps me stay like very locked in with my approach and being around great players and seeing great players like do their thing just keeps me super honed in on what I need to do day in, day out, pitch in, pitch out. So it allowed me to just go out and trust my process and hit balls hard and swing at the right pitches. And um, I, I, I love having the challenge to rise up and face better players. And I just went out and believed in myself and, and the outcomes happened. So. Yeah. How much yeah. did it, how much did it bother you not being able, not being eligible to play for team USA this past year? I know that that was a goal of <laughs> yours, but uh, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it was definitely something I knew was maybe not a possibility, but it was always a goal. Like in my head, I I wanted to play for Team USA before my draft year, just because you see, you see the guys just every every year for years on end. Like the college USA national team has been full of big leaguers and and studs, and it's that <clears throat> kind of peak. So I, I would have loved to get around those guys and get to compete and be teammates and learn from some of the best guys across the country. Um, so. Yeah, it kind of gets to me that I, I, I couldn't be a part of that. I wish I could, but I also love the fact that, like, I got to play a full season in the Cape and also, like, some of those Team USA guys, like, I'm going to see the next level and whatever, and they, like, 
they're kind of like, who is this guy? So it's it's cool in a way. It's like, who's this who's this Aussie guy that we didn't even see? I don't know. It's cool. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> uh, well, hey, I'll hit you with a couple more questions here. Get you out of here. Uh, so you've seen a lot of pitchers. You've you've been on the Cape, been in the Pac-12, and you've handled like everybody. But I gotta ask, like, has there been a guy that just his stuff was was next level and and really kind of gave you fits? Um. Okay. A couple guys coming to my mind. Um. Pitchability, like pitchability, and like, oh, this guy can really throw it with a couple pitches, and it's it's gross, but it's also like he's good. Um. Like Quinn Matthews always gave me a, a little. Like he just he's just he's deceptive um from stanford and then kelly austin was a senior at ucla last year um you don't see any real splitters in the u.s um and he had a real splitter and then uh, like good high ride and so the righty um left on my left hand swing splitter like he got a couple whiffs um i was pretty impressed with him and then <clears throat> cade cade obermuller or obermeister iowa yeah. lefty Pitch for Hyannis. I think Alvin Mueller, like, he's real. He's real. Like, I hope that everyone saw all of it. He's real. Like, the guy's loose, whippy, low release, runs it, like, like at the top of the zone, it's unhittable. Slightest, like, probably 18, 20 on a good good one, and it just has no drop. It's just a straight. Like, he's, he's disgusting. Um, and I think with, like, added strength and size, he's going to be – really real so that guy elite um and then ty floyd and ty floyd and uh thatcher hud's breaking balls in the regional um those guys had real real breaking balls and and real stuff so i'd say that's guys that came to mind i'm probably missing people but um those are some of the real arms i've seen i like it those are all really good arms and i'm glad you brought up Cade because uh i've been a big Cade guy since <laughs> high school and that kid can rip it yeah, he's a he's a good arm. Yeah. Um, two more questions here. So, mm -hmm. say that you play for another twenty years. All right. Uh, what's the mm -hmm. one song? If you had to pick one walk up song for the rest of your career, it's same walk up song twenty years. What are you comfortable picking? Wow. Damn. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna go with. It's probably boring, but. Uh, my first ever walk-up song when I go to the States is called The Buzz by a producer called Hermitude from Australia. It's like a it's like a house, like sort of a drop song. Um, but it gets the crowd going. Um, it doesn't like it doesn't give a personality really. It's just like a good energy to it. Like it's not too country or too like rap. Um, it's just a, a little dance song, good vibe. Um, so I feel like in any environment with whether it's our sort of older fan base here at Oregon State or younger fan bases in wherever, like it'd be fine. So I think I'd get away with that. It's called the buzz. Yeah. Good answer. Uh, all right. This is the last question. It's the toughest one. I'm just going to serve it up. Uh, you met a lot of guys at the Cape. You played with a lot of guys at Oregon State. Uh, who's the one guy? No chance you're going to let him date your sister. Wow. No chance I let date my sister Oregon State and the K um <laughs> probably probably Wade Mecca um <laughs> Max Wado's got a <laughs> Wado's got a great heart but he's just so locked in on baseball and like, he's just, that's, that's, it's just baseball. And I don't know. I like what I would, but Wade just comes from mind. He's just, Wade's a little grimy. He's gritty. His, yeah. I don't know. He, <laughs> maybe too, too crazy. For my, for my daughter. There you go. <laughs> well, it's just, that's uh, a good answer. A yeah. Wade, uh, Wade yeah. moved quite fast up the ladder, San Francisco Giants. Yeah. Um, uh, Hey, Travis, man, it's been a pleasure. I'm really rooting for you, dude. I think you're going to have a big year. It's easy to say that if you're coming off, you know, what, 30 straight months of sublime baseball. So uh, I'm excited to see what you've kind of added to your tool belt uh, this this upcoming spring. Good luck the rest of fall ball. 
and uh, we'll see you out there, man. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it.